Yes, hello, good evening, right around the country. Welcome to this special APEC wrap-up edition of the war. Great as always to have your company. And uh, Craig, aren't these dry as a bone oh, great? What a, what a fantastic, appropriate choice, wasn't mm. it? Because after APEC refused to set targets for climate change, the world pretty much will be dry as a bone. It will be. But look, look at that. You can't expect too much to come out of a $330 million summit, Chris. I mean, for some leaders, it was hard enough just knowing what the summit was called. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your introduction. Thank you for being such a... Uh, a fine host for the OPEC summit. Georgie, mm -hmm. Georgie, Georgie. And then did you see at other times in the conference he called it IPEC, UPEC and uh, Gregory Peck. <laughs> and, uh, and the gaffes then continued when he tried to praise Australia's commitment to Iraq. As John Howard accurately noted when he went to thank the Austrian troops there. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't actually a gaffe. Howard did visit the Austrians in Iraq. Yes. Mom, it's, like, it's a famous photo. I apologise. But uh, it does beg the question, if someone as stupid as George Bush can get a seat at the APEC table to discuss the war on terror, then shouldn't we open it up to all the key players in world terror, like Osama bin Laden? Exactly. Where was Osama's invite? He should have been there at APEC. And who better to help him get them there than the most wanted people in the world right now? Julian Morrow and Jazz Lichardello. Let's <laughs> Oh, he does. Look, $160 million they spent on APEC security, the biggest lockdown operation the country's ever seen, and yet there were holes in the security wide enough to drive three trucks, two motorcycles and four Secret Service guards through. <laughs> Top effort, blokes. Uh, let's have a look now at how it all unfolded. Talk us through it. OK, well, Osama likes to travel in style, mm. right? So we made a do-it-yourself motorcade, cunningly disguised mm. with go. this Canadian go, go. flag. Oh, yeah. It's a modern-day Trojan horse. Yeah, but there are a few hints we were fakes, like our official code, SFA. <laughs> yeah, I don't think motorcades have had runners since JFK, especially not ones with handy cam. But once we were rolling, nothing was going to stop us, except... Oh, fuck, we got a red light. <laughs> yeah, let him through. But yeah, cops go. don't keep a psalm away. So watch this guy here. He stops the traffic and then waves us through. <laughs> that was amazing. No questions asked at all. On we roll right up to what they call the Ring of Steel. There it is. And didn't security jump on us? Are we stopping? No, you're fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not too much checking at that checkpoint. Yeah, so look, we were just walking on down, right on down to the red zone. Now, that is the real no-go zone. But I tell you what, it's pretty, pretty relaxed in yeah. there. Look at this guy come up here. He's back to us. I don't know what he's looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, you know, the media said we got past a second checkpoint, but it, it wasn't really like a checkpoint. It was more like a guard of honour. Yeah. <laughs> They're not too fast, are they? Yeah, now look, by this stage, it's become pretty bloody obvious the cops weren't going to stop us, so we decided to stop ourselves. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to turn this around. We've got to go back. We've got to go back. OK. Now, uh, at this stage, we've got much further than we ever inspected. I think that's fair to say. And all of a sudden, we're trying to turn around a motorcade right in front of George W. Bush's hotel. Chaz, I was a bit worried. Yeah. But as for the cops, well, they weren't so worried. We need to go back this way, OK? OK, turn around. Turn around. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, officers. Good work. Great work. Well, they did say the road was ours. Ours to do whatever we like, apparently. So, uh, look, we've been in that car for ages, mm -hmm. so we thought we might stretch our legs a little. OK, okay. let's walk. Let's walk. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. He's walking with me. All right, come on, let's go. And I think this is when they got a bit suspicious. I think so, yeah. Who are you? Officer Julian Morrow. Chase. VIP liaison. OK. So here I am, Assad bin Laden, staying 10 metres away from Bush's hotel. So what do they do? They arrest the other guy. Oh, no, hang on. Oh, there's some other guys coming to arrest you now. No, they're for me as well. Poor old Osama. No one likes Osama. Got him then. Uh, give it up for our apex supervillains, Julian and Chaz. I'm telling you, all it takes is a Canadian flag. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Well, it's funny you mention that because they actually tightened security the day after you guys did it. It was they kind of tightened it up a lot. They did. Well, they said they did, but we just wanted to be absolutely sure that it had been tightened. So. The very next day, we went to see if the cops had got any better at spotting a fake Canadian motorcade. 
Canadians. The area, please. Sorry? Leave the area, please. We've got a Canadian flag. Turn around, leave the area, please. Oh, I can't believe it. What's wrong with this thing? I can't believe this it. This doesn't look any more ridiculous than the other one. <laughs> It's a big improvement. It was good. Much yeah, tighter, yeah. which is very reassuring. Well, not quite, Chris, because there was actually another security breach at APEC which left the police even more red faced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look out. He's infiltrated again. The man's a mastermind. <laughs> To be honest, I don't think you do need to be a mastermind to get past Apex security, Chris. If any of the cops had bothered to look at our passes, they should have seen our clearly marked joke in capital letters. Oh, to be fair, though, I think on George Bush's security pass has also been marked in joke, so... <laughs> Maybe. Look, well, I still... Guys, right. beautiful base mining as always by Chaz, and that's all we have time for this week. Remember, you can podcast tonight's show by going to abc.net.au slash chaser. And you can watch most of that Apex motorcade footage to be replayed again at a Sydney local court on the 4th of October. <laughs> and uh, then again on Canada's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah, but, <laughs> but look, jokes aside, we should say that it's been a pretty bizarre week in the life of this show, and I'd like to stress that it wasn't just Chaz and me who were arrested last Thursday. No, it's not all about us. There were nine other people charged alongside us, hard-working producers, crew, drivers and extras, and as a gesture of our gratitude, we'd like to give them a moment in the spotlight now too. OK, that's enough. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If our bowel conditions allow, we'll be back again next week. Until then, good night. Good night. Good night.